Even bin Laden himself warned us three weeks earlier. Osama bin Laden warned three weeks ago that he would attack American interests in an unprecedented attack, a very big one. There was a report, you'll recall, that the Mossad, the Israeli intelligence agency, did indeed send representatives to the U.S. to warn just before 9-11 that a major terrorist sure, attack sure. was imminent. Prior to 9-11, it was widely reported that hijacked planes could be used as weapons. Uh, by Yusef's group and uh, bin Laden's group, to undertake a uh, suicide mission. Murad uh, narrated to us about uh, a plan by the Ramsey cell in the continental U.S. to hijack a commercial plane and ram it to the CIA headquarters in London, Virginia, and uh, also the Pentagon. And they found more evidence pointing to other targets, evidence the Philippine government says it passed on to the U.S. The targets they listed were CIA headquarters, Pentagon, Transamerica, Sears, and the World Trade Center. President Bush even received the Phoenix memo, stating bin Laden was determined to strike in the U.S. in August, right before the attacks. The president was aware that bin Laden, of course, is previous administrations has been well known um, that bin Laden was determined to strike the United States. In fact, the, um, the label on the president's uh, the PDB was bin Laden determined to strike the United States. On August 6, 2001, President Bush was presented a President's Daily Brief article titled, Bin Laden Determined to Strike in U.S. The lead sentence of that president's daily brief indicated that bin Laden and his followers wanted to follow the example of World Trade Center bomber Ramzi Youssef and bring the fighting to America. The article cited a more sensational threat reporting that bin Laden wanted to hijack a U.S. aircraft. The president's daily brief item included information from the FBI indicating patterns of suspicious activity in this country consistent with preparations for hijackings. The president broke his silence today about the revelations earlier this week that he had been briefed before September 11th about a possible al-Qaeda hijacking plot. The comments took place in the White House South Lawn setting where the press could not ask questions. While he was honoring the Air Force football team, his comments diverted to what has become topic A in Washington. You know what's interesting about Washington? It's a town, unfortunately, it's the kind of place where second guessing has become second nature. What I want to say to my, uh, my Democratic friends in the Congress is that they need to be very cautious not to seek political advantage by making incendiary suggestions, as were made by some today, that the White House had advanced information that would have prevented the tragic attacks of 9-11. Clark confirms that in June, July, and August 2001, the Central Intelligence Agency warned the president in daily briefings of unprecedented indications that a major al-Qaeda attack was going to happen against the United States. It was so well known that the United States had done several drills with this exact scenario prior to 9-11. We're going to take a closer look tonight at another example of where, despite the conventional wisdom, there were people in the United States who actually were preparing to defend against the kind of attacks which occurred here on 9-11. The North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD for short, has been defending the skies over the U.S. and Canada for almost 50 years, 46 to be precise. USA Today reports that in the two years before the attacks on September the 11th, NORAD conducted exercises using hijacked airliners as weapons. And one target was the World Trade Center. Here's ABC's Brian Ross. President Bush has said again and again that no one could have imagined what Osama bin Laden ordered for September 11th. We knew he hated us. But there was a... Uh, nobody in our government at least, and I don't think the prior government that could envision flying airplanes into buildings on such a massive scale. But that turns out not to be true. U.S. military planners did envision and practice those very scenarios. 
As reported by USA Today, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, conducted exercises with fighter jets, simulating hijacked planes flown into the World Trade Center in the two years before the attacks. Pentagon planners also envisioned the attack on the Pentagon five months before it happened. One of these drills was run on June 1st and 2nd of 2001. Amalgam Virgo was an exercise where multiple attack scenarios would be occurring simultaneously, including attacks from cruise missiles, unmanned aerial vehicles, and hijacked aircraft. The scenario also envisioned a hijacker taking control of a commercial aircraft and slamming it into the nation's capital. The exercises would constantly be monitored by military satellites and planes. Osama bin Laden was the poster boy for this plot, appearing on the cover. Isn't it a fact, sir, that prior to September 11, 2001, NORAD had already in the works plans uh, to simulate in an exercise a simultaneous hijacking of two planes in the United States? Colonel Scott, do you have any data on that? I'm not aware of that, sir. I was not present at the time. Sir, that was Operation Amalgam Virgo. Yeah, yes, sir. So what did happen on 9-11? The truth is, there was a lot more going on that day than we were being told. There were several war games and exercises being run simultaneously involving multiple government agencies. John Fulton and a team from the CIA would be conducting a drill at 8.45 a.m. out of the National Reconnaissance Office in Chantilly, Virginia in which a plane is crashed into a building. Other drills would literally cripple our defensive and investigative abilities on that morning. But this very interesting information, Katie, Matt and Tom from the FBI, they had been operating a massive uh, exercise from their hostage rescue unit. All of their top teams, about 50 personnel, helicopters, equipment, were in Monterey, California for the last two days, scheduled to fly back today commercially. So all of those people are out of place. It's fair to say, according to uh, sources that we've talked to here at NBC, that the FBI uh, rescue operations and other FBI operations are really in chaos right now because they can't reach their officials in New York. All of their phone lines are down. And now you've got all of their special experts on this stuck in Monterey, California, trying to get a military flight back because there are no longer commercial flights. So they are seriously out of pocket and there is a real breakdown of the FBI anti-terror coordination team, which is of course the principal team that would lead any effort. I actually found myself in uh, Montana with 50 state emergency managers, the director of FEMA, his top staff at the National Emergency Management Association conference. A um, number of emergency managers from New York State, from Pennsylvania, from Virginia, Maryland, the district, most of New England, made the flight on a C-130 last night. Uh, it was uh, one of the only flights across the country, a military aircraft. Northern Vigilance would redirect fighter jets out of the northeastern sector to patrol Canada and Alaska. Vigilant Guardian and Vigilant Warrior were exercises involving hijacked aircraft that would go in and out of radar. These would appear real to those involved. We fought many Phantoms that day. We got many aircraft calls inbound uh, that morning that turned out to be uh, Phantoms. During that time frame, we had multiple aircraft called hijacked all over the country. These exercises would not cease until after United 93 was brought down and the attacks were over. Open line. Come on, Sergeant Richmond. Sergeant Richmond, Sergeant Light from Cheyenne Mountain Test Control, how are you? I'm doing fine. Okay, I need you to terminate all exercise inputs coming to Cheyenne Mountain at this time. Copy. And uh, stay on loop until I verify that you dis or the connectivity is disconnected on the exercise side only. Uh -huh. Okay, no, do not do any more inputs on the exercise side and stand by. I got Cheyenne Mountain on the line, terminating all exercise inputs. So, for over a safety didn't know there's uh, exercise. Oh, yeah. In fact, more hijackings were thought to be taking place. It's not a radar scope, and it's not just a video game. It's actually people's lives that you're trying to keep from running into each other. Other planes were thought to have been hijacked and almost shot down. An aircraft inbound to Whitehorse from Alaskan airspace was a hijacked aircraft, and that the military flight crews were aware of this, and they were en route to intercept the aircraft. Some of these war games and their details remain classified to this day. 
So is it any wonder that Donald Rumsfeld gave these warnings to military personnel the day after the attacks? Finally, I'd like to say a word or two to the men and women in the defense establishment, uh, most of whom deal with classified information. When people uh, deal with intelligence information and make it available to people who are not cleared for that classified information, the effect is to reduce the chances that the United States government has to track down and deal with the people who have uh, perpetrated the attacks on the United States and killed so many Americans. Later in the day, weapons are found planted on several other planes.